Now, the goal of this lecture is to talk about another type of violence, asymmetrical violence. This is a little different than, say, conventional violence. As we see conventional war and terror, political violence, etc., which come with all the human rights abuses, still exist as the Ukraine versus Russia, for example. But what's interesting about asymmetrical violence, which you're going to see in the movie and in my two little videos from Bogota, is that asymmetrical violence, you don't know who you're fighting against. And this is extremely important to study in a course on violence, conflict, and human rights. It's different. It's not like you have red coats versus, you know, the United States when, well, before the United States existed. This is more about fighting your own people, whether it's Vietnam, Angola, Nicaragua, El Salvador, etc. It's a lot different and it's very different, difficult to contain. One of the most important aspects of asymmetrical violence, first it's asymmetrical, it's not fighting one on one. You're basically doing these hit and run attacks against a particular government. So you don't even know who your enemy is. When I was a professor in the Universidad Central Americana, which lamentably doesn't exist anymore, Managua, Nicaragua, I had former soldiers and they would be studied during the day and then go out and take out government, governmental businesses. They would attack the military installations. They would uh, take out say electricity grids, et cetera. But the government never knew who these people were. They were like Nicaraguan, I'm Nicaraguan, right? I'm not Nicaraguan, but they'd be, they're Nicaraguan, the government's Nicaraguan. Are you my friend? Are you my foe? You don't know. you Because they melt back into society. Like in Vietnam, we never knew when we, which I thought was a titanic mistake, in Vietnam, who was your enemy? You don't know. So there's this idea, a concept of invisibility, meaning you're invisible, deniability. You can deny that you were there, right? No, I was never there. I was with the abuela. I was with my mother. I was with my babushka, wherever you're fighting. They're very difficult. Even in Chechnya, it took Russia, what, three or four wars to root out the guerrillas. And then they came back in the form of the Black Widow. Those were the widowers, um, of the fallen soldiers. You know, this is a very difficult war to root out. And then the government often becomes pretty brutal and paranoid and starts indiscriminately attacking a broad spectrum of people. So you don't know who your enemy is. So you start getting paranoid, you start killing people. And then that pushes those people into the guerrilla war, a guerrilla group is an informal group of people who take arms against a particular government. Like you see behind me, I was at that uh, Palacio Nacional a lot of times. I wasn't there during the revolution, but this is the culmination of the Sandinista revolution that was able to overthrow the Somoza dynasty in 1979, Somoza got so brutal, him and his psychopath Enrique Bermudez, who he of course later supported, started indiscriminately bombing barrios, which pushed people all the way to Messiah, that's another town uh, for the final offensive. And then they came back and just overthrew the government. But the point is, what you're gonna see with asymmetrical violence is that you do not know who your enemy is. They're doing indiscriminate attacks against you. And then you get paranoid because of the invisibility, the deniability of these attacks and the surprise attacks that you start killing people indiscriminately. That is the government does. And more and more people start joining the guerrilla group because they say, hey, my abuelo was killed. My father was killed. My son was killed. I'm going off with the guerrilla. In fact, the FMLAN, the guerrilla group in El Salvador, which you're going to see in the movie, you know, had so many people joining and it didn't have enough weapons. It was going to take over the capital city, uh, San Salvador, but uh, they went into a peace process because they had no other choice. This is very, very important. There's other things about this too that's important as, as, as you'll see.
uh, in, a, in a short clip on Algeria, you don't know who you're fighting against. It can be women. Women often, you know, are seen as more innocuous, safer, et cetera. But they take people out all the time. I mean, they're very useful to do. In fact, that that video in Algeria shows a woman, you know, who goes in and, and bombs because in the quote unquote Muslim culture, they didn't suspect women uh, to be so forceful, but docile. They thought women would be docile. And they used women in Algeria against the French to kick them out. And that resistance was very strong. Here in Nicaragua, the women used to use, well, the guerrillas used to use women and women would say, oh, you know, seduce the, the Somosista soldier, that's a governmental soldier. And then they would ransack them and then take all the weapons and stuff like that. So you never know who you're fighting against. And this deniability, because you can easily deny who is there, nobody knows. Invisibility, you melt back into the society. And these surprise attacks, it's a surprise. You don't know when, it, when, where, or how it's going to happen, is extremely, extremely frustrating for government. So they start indiscriminately killing people. And then that pushes a lot of these people, right? into the arms of the guerrillas, whether it's behind me, Nicaragua in their win, the FMLN, Algeria, et cetera, is that the government really doesn't know what to do. And that happens a lot, not just in like, say, a government against its own people, but a, this is how a lot of wars of independence were, right? You didn't know who was on your side. Uh, in, a, in, the, in the case of Algeria and the French, who is on our side? We don't know. You know, and then there are spies everywhere. And this is even happening in the case of Russia. People think Russia is very unpopular in the Ukraine, obviously, particularly in the West it is. But they've been finding Russian spies, that is, Ukrainians who are spying for the Russians, within its own uh, ranks. So, the you know, this is something that's very difficult when you're fighting, uh, you know, people that are very similar to you. Like, and this is also beneficial to the people who are fighting against you. So, like, if the United States goes to Iraq, Afghanistan, or Vietnam, or Nicaragua to fight, it's pretty easy to kind of identify these people. The same thing goes with the Russians in Afghanistan, uh, et cetera. But this is one of the issues that you have is that, and most countries are not very good at guerrilla fighting. So this is one of the things that becomes somewhat problematic within these um wars and the violence ratchets up and so does and it's an unfortunate thing and i'll tell you when it happens uh sexual assault against women the attack against children etc because i mean the class is called uh what's it called violence conflict and human rights so we are going to touch upon some very lamentable situations that happen in conflict that's why the second part will be dealing how to incorporate people through the book Trauma and Recovery by Judy Herman, because even after, say, uh, this group here, the San Denises won in 1979, I was not there, I'm not that old, but after then they fight a guerrilla war against them, because after they overthrow the government, then people try to, you know, overthrow them, and you have a lot of trauma in society. So this is something very, very important, and we touch on, you know, everything from women's rights, children's rights, etc., after war. And this is this is a lamentable yet important situation that we have to address. But there is shining light at the end of the tunnel. And this is basically when we start getting into more conflict resolution, incorporating people and, and trying to get countries to be more stable. Take care, everyone.